Happy Halloween everybody! Today I'm going to show you how to make a jack-o'-lantern out of plywood. Check it out! Hey guys, so I'll start off with a real quick overview of the design. I've designed it in Fusion 360 and then I took it over to Slicer. This is an add-in made by Autodesk themselves. Awesome program for making stuff. So you're just going to import it straight into Slicer, take that model, you're going to put it down to its original scale, and then you're going to come in here and you're going to select your building method as the stack plies. Once you do that, make sure that you change your manufacturing settings. My plywood was 0.23 inches thick. Change that and make sure that your uh, size of paper that you're going to be printing on is what you've got to print off of and you're ready to go to town. Hit print on this thing and we'll get started with the hands on. So once we had everything printed out, we were ready to start cutting things down to shape and putting them on the board. After everything's cut, make sure you lay it out so we don't run into any surprises when we glue it up later. Alright, so a quick tip here. If you put tape down before you use your spray adhesive, stuff comes off way easier. You don't have to sit there and sand all that off. It's awesome. The glue I'm using here is the Super 77 by 3M. This stuff works awesome for putting on woodworking patterns. Now I'm going to use my scroll saw to cut out the rough shape of the pattern so that they're easier to handle and manipulate as I'm cutting out the fine detail. Then I'll start cutting the outside of each piece. So just how accurate you want to be is really up to you on this part because you're really going to come back with a sander and clean most of this up and blend it in with the layers on either side of this layer. Then I took each piece over to the drill press and drilled a hole so I could put the scroll saw blade through the middle. This allows you to slip the blade through the inside and start cutting from the inside rather than having to come through the outer layer and have a slice in your work. Now I'm using a center finder to mark the center of both the bottom piece and a spare piece. So I'll drill a quarter inch hole right in the middle of these. This will allow a quarter inch bolt to go through and clamp all the layers between the bottom layer and the top call piece. As I mentioned earlier, getting the patterns off with the tape instead of the glue is way easier. Now I'll put the bolt through here and do a dry fit and get everything lined up so that I know everything is going to fit exactly how I want it to when I do the glue up. So you're going to tighten this down and you might have to fiddle with it a little bit but you want it snug enough so that the things don't move on their own but free enough that you can move them and manipulate the layers by hand and line them back up. So the next thing you're going to want to do is just mark these holes to make sure everything's lined up. A better way to do this would be use dowels, which the slicer program does, but I didn't on this initial one. The next thing for me to do is to outline where the layers sat at this point so that I could try and get them as center as possible when I came time to glue up. The mechanical pencil works really well here for giving you nice tight lines. Now I'll take everything apart and get ready for the glue up. So for this glue up I used Rockler's glue brush. It might have been better to use a roller or something but this was nice to have the control and it did a good job. So here I decided to do the top and bottom separately. This proved to be way easier to align everything and make sure that I was getting the best fit I could. Here I'm using packing tape just to make sure this releases easily after the glue has been put on and this gets clamped down. Now we're going to tighten everything back together and get it nice and snug so that we get a nice even spread of glue and nice pressure throughout all the joints. So like I said, I think it's set up a little too quickly. I'm actually prying the layers apart so I can recenter all of them right where they need to go. 
So you could get around this in one of two ways. Either use a roller, which would be much quicker, or use the dowels, as I mentioned earlier, to get everything aligned initially. And now I'm snugging everything down with two sets of wrenches so that we get a nice tight seam throughout each of the different layers. Now I'm using the brush to go back and fill in only two little voids that I found. This was great plywood, but uh, it still had a couple little, little holes that I filled with glue and sawdust. And we're going to let it set for the night. Now we're going to loosen everything up and see how the glue dried. I was pretty happy with the way everything turned out. I didn't really see any voids after we filled the holes and uh, we're good to go. So after it was dry, the next thing to do was to take off the edges and blend them all together. So I went to my disc sander. Well, as you can see, it's time for a new disc and I didn't have the time to do this nor the energy. So I went to the belt sander. This actually worked really well. I was really impressed. I think the size of the pumpkin that I made fit really well with the belt sander and uh, took it off rather quickly and allowed me to get in these grooves. I knew I'd be using the belt sander for the detail but thought the disc would work better for the flax but this actually did a great job in both areas. So the final bit of sanding that I did I tried to go with the plies just like you would going with the grain so it would be a little less obvious if you had any marks from the grit of the sandpaper. And now it's time to use the file to clean up any lines left over from the belt sander and then it was on to the 100 grit sandpaper to smooth everything out and give us a nice surface to draw our face on for the jack-o'-lantern. Now sketching's not my forte here but I went ahead and gave it a whirl figured if I could do it as a kid I could probably sketch up a decent pumpkin face now so good practice for Halloween. Now I'm off to the drill press to drill holes to get a coping saw in. Turns out couldn't get my coping saw to work like I wanted, so I went to the Dremel. Well, sir, someday I'd like to be a, a dentist. A dentist? Well, we need one up here. I've been studying. It's fascinating. You've no idea. Molars and bicuspids and incisors. Now, listen, you. You're an elf, and elves make toys. <laughs> so, after the Dremel, I just cleaned everything up with a file and uh, gave it some nice, sharp, clean edges as best I could. And then I sanded and sanded and sanded. I started at 100 and worked my way up to 320. So, the sandpaper I'm using is flexible. It's the Pro Stuff from 3M. It's amazing, especially for stuff like this. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can get some yourself. After this, I gave everything a nice wipe down and made sure I get all off all the dust for the next application of the wipe on poly. The stuff's really pretty simple to apply. You really just take a rag and wipe it on there, let it dry for two or three hours, come back with some 320 and hit it again. I put three coats on here. You could put more or less just depending on what you're comfortable with. Here I'm just using a cheap acid brush to make sure I get in all the edges and crevices of the face. Hey guys, so this is what it looks like. I'm really stoked the way it turned out. You know, this is a new method for me. I wasn't sure how it would look, but I think it looks awesome. It's a little smaller than I anticipated initially, but hey, there's always time to make another one before Halloween. I wanted to make sure to get this out to you guys so you could make your own. If you're interested, I'll leave links to plans below where you can cut out your own patterns. This pumpkin I made here is from the smaller plans. If you want something a little bigger, go with the medium plans. If you're looking for a place to get this wood, I got mine at Michael's. I'm sure Hobby Lobby carries it as well. It's quarter inch by 12 inch by 24 inch birch plywood. Thanks guys. Hope you enjoyed this project. Stick around. If you guys like this, check out the other videos I've got posted here. And uh, hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. Thanks guys. Bye.